Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on, looking like the trap dog, giving them all. Like a million bucks, but things in this cup. Y'all tell me who could it be? But Steve Harvey, oh, yeah. yeah. Listen to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Y'all listen to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Uh, got a radio show. Yep. Yep. Sometimes that's all I can say. <laughs> yep. Man. How far I've come is really unbelievable. But you know, I finally figured it out, man. God allowed uh, me to have the life I've had so that I can become experienced at so many different things. And in this experience, when I'm talking and sharing with people, I will be able to relate to a lot of different circumstances, not exact, but just the circumstances, you know, you know, if a person comes to me and they say, man, I've been down and out. Okay. Well, I know what that is, man. I, I didn't, I didn't have any direction. Okay. Got that. Been there, man. At one point in time, man, I just kept piling mistake on top of mistake. Okay. So, you know, uh, I think what I'm trying to say to everybody is when you're going through life and life is dealing the cards that it deals, I want you to understand that life deals everybody these cards. The disappointment card, the setback card, the failure card, the mishap card, the unexpected misery card, everybody going to get the grief card. Everybody going to get the rash of bad decision card. Everybody going to get them. Understand that going in, that everybody is going to get these cards. It's how you play them, though. You know, uh, from time to time, one more time, it's how you play them. Uh, You know, from time to time when I'm watching TV, I I love to watch the uh, World Series of Poker. I like watching poker tournaments on TV because it, it's it's really weird, re, re, weird what's happened to sport to to poker. They are actually trying to call it a sport, you know, and it's the everyday guy that doesn't have to be athletically inclined to anything, who has a shot of winning a title if they play their cards right. The best poker players in the world don't have the best hands. They just make the best plays. I've seen guys win a hand with nine, two in their hand. That's nothing. And win the hand because they knew the bluff. They knew the odds. They calculated risk. They made the stakes higher than the other person was willing to pay. They gave off the illusion that they had something when in actuality 
they had nothing. So what I what I enjoy about poker and watching it is that these people, these people here, play the hand they dealt. And it ain't always a good hand. But it ain't whether your hand is good. And it ain't whether you're going to get dealt bad cards or not, because you're going to get dealt some bad cards. Everybody ain't finna get two bullets in their hand. You ain't finna get two aces when you get dealt, Uh, you know, when you play a draw poker. Some of your cards going to be nothing, but you got to turn that nothing into something. So when you get dealt these cards in life, it ain't the fact that you getting keep getting them dealt. I was talking with a young person yesterday, and uh, we were talking and we keep having the same conversation over and over and over. And they could not understand why they were not moving forward. But I said, you don't understand. Every time we talk, we have the exact same conversation. It is simply because you keep getting your cards and you play in them the same way. See, until you make a conscientious dip of the conscious decision to do something different, the results will continue to be the same. See, here's, here's, here's the way this works. When you're dealt the disappointments in life, it's how you handle the disappointments that determine the outcome and who you are. Because everybody going to be disappointed. Everybody going to lose a loved one. Everybody going to make a bad decision. Everybody going to wake up one morning and have done something they regretted. Everybody going to get caught at the wrong time. Every Everybody going to make a mistake. It ain't just you. It is how you play your cards when they get dealt to you that determine who you are. Now, how do I play my cards better? First of all, it's a mindset. Quit looking at everything as just the end when it happens to you. Oh, Lord, woe is me. No, everybody got your circumstances somewhere. It ain't, oh, woe is me. It's, hold on, man, okay? Let me play this out to see how God done connected this to something else. See, as soon as a person have a setback, what's the first thing a lot of people do? They go straight negative. I can't seem to get a break. I can't seem to move forward. Hold on, man. Do you realize this could be connected to something? See, you got to understand, man, that this thing is all connected, that you're not having these mishaps and these spills and accidents and falls for no reason. It's so you can become experienced at them. So when he takes you to the next level, when it happens again, you have no how and how to handle it. If you keep throwing yourself off the cliff every time something happens, you're just going to be a cliff diver. Man, stop tripping yourself out. I was talking to this young person. I kept saying, and and you know what they tried to tell me? I'm trying to stay positive, but the people around here, they just killing that. Oh, I see. So when you learn something and you know something, you don't take ownership of it. You allow other people to come into what you know and believe and shake it loose from you. I don't care who you are. You're not doing me like that. Here's the deal. I have a gift that was given to me from God. That is the gift of comedy. That's what I've done. I've made the bulk of my living on that skill set right there. There are comedians who are supposedly friends of mine who I've worked with who get around in huddles with one another and they say, man, Steve really ain't funny. I don't see what they be laughing at. He ain't funny to me. He wasn't the funniest king to me. Excuse me. You're irrelevant in this conversation. Because irregardless as to how you feel about me, there are people think that I'm knocked down, kill over funny. But more importantly, I own the gift that God gave to me. I take ownership of his blessing because you don't think it's so. You ain't taking that from me. Stop letting people steal your joy. Stop letting people take what you're supposed to know. Look, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kind person at heart, man. You ain't nothing. Now you sitting here going, man, I guess I ain't. What, what you tripping for? You are a kind person. Own that. Take ownership of it. Stop letting things God has given you be taken away from others. The devil is a cold player and he got cold players working for him. Just shaking, just taking stuff from you. You know, I'm a hard worker. I really am intelligent. You stupid. Man, I thought I was a hard worker, man. They came in here and said I was stupid, man. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, what? Excuse me. You're a very bright person. Hey, y'all, take ownership. When God gives you something, blesses you with a gift, a talent, a skill set, a mindset, own it. Don't let people come in here and take it from you, man. Okay, I probably shouldn't have went there. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, elephant trainers, dog catchers. I'm talking to everybody. Coca-Cola drivers, Pepsi drivers. I know y'all don't care for each other, but hey, let's make it work today. <laughs> Uber probably got a problem with Lyft, but everybody got a radio listening to this show. That's all I care about. Sorry. Republicans, Democrats, I don't care. This is that damn Steve Harvey Morning Show. The voice you listening to is none other than that damn voice of Steve Harvey. Feel how you want to feel. I'm is who I'm is. Ooh. Ooh, that felt good. <laughs> you are who you are. <laughs> Just to be my natural self. Steve Harvey Morning Show, Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica Jr., and Tommy ain't here today. Junior, what's on your mind? Uh, I, it's a big day for you. Uh, Network launching. I don't know how to deal with you, man. SteveHarveyNetwork.com, 12.30 today, Fireside Chat uh, with the platform, streaming platform uh, with Mark Cuban. Steve Harvey, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, what can I do for you, Junior? Uh, You're talking you, about the you, Mark Cuban that owned the, 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 the one that owned the, the Mavericks. The yeah. Shark Tank. Yeah, my homie. <laughs> Not your homie. <laughs> you start a network, you instantly homies. <laughs> That's how you- yeah, hell yeah, we friends, though. I love and it. And though, and though, and, you know, and, and it, this is just a message to everybody. Mm-hmm. Listen to me. God is in the blessing business. Mm-hmm. Ask and you shall receive. Yes, sir. If you write the vision and make it plain, as it says in Habakkuk 2 and 2, This is not in the rich people's Bible. This is in everybody's Bible. If you write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, wait for it, for surely it will come at an appointed time. I'm on my fifth vision board. Fifth. What? I'm on my fifth one. Mm Because the mother four is full. They gone. Got them. I had to take them off. When you say full, you mean completed the vision on the they already came accomplished done. Ain't no houses on there, ain't no cars on there, ain't none of that. All that, all I got, all that's in the yard. Got it. God gave it to me okay. because I followed the principle. I wrote it down, and I read it every morning, every night. I'm, I'm gonna show you right now. These are my two phones. Let me show it to you right quick. Okay. I, I ain't gonna. Oh, I'm, I'm just show it to you real fast. Let me take this off. Uh-huh. You ready? Yes. Flash. Sir. That's my vision board. Okay. okay, I saw that That's one. on one phone. <laughs> you didn't want us to really this? see it. Yeah. He said, flash. Yeah, it's some he took it, it back down. He took it right back down. Yes, okay. he did. Yeah, because I don't want nobody reading it and all this here because uh, yeah. a lot of haters. Uh-huh. Well, that's, but that's, that's what it said. And I yeah. put them on my phone. So when I pick up my phone, mm-hmm. bam, there go my vision board. Mm-hmm. And every time the phone rang, I look at it. It plants it in my mind subconsciously. So whether I'm thinking about it or not, I'm attracting those things to me. Right. And that's a principle of success. And you don't you don't have to go to this church to do that. You don't have to uh-huh. speak in tongues for that. If you do, that's fine. If you do you Holy Ghost feel all that's fine. Mm-hmm. But the Bible says write the vision and make it plain. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Steve. Coming up at 32 after the hour. Run that prank back right after all this. the way back. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's time now to run that prank back. Junior, you're in for the nephew. Where is Tommy? We don't know where Tommy at. Unc, let him do what he want to do. I don't let him do nothing. I just don't care. <laughs> I, listen to me. <laughs> I got it. It's you that don't want to come back. to work? Don't come. That ain't my damn problem. <laughs> Run that prank back. Come on, cat. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Karen. This is Karen. Karen, uh, hey, listen, my name is Mark. Are you married to Jason? Yes. Okay. All right. I got the right person. Listen, I don't I don't even know how to say this to you. My, my, um, my, like I say, my name is Mark. I follow my wife today. Uh-huh. And I, right now, I'm at a park, and I'm almost certain that my wife is, right now, I'm I'm about two or 300 yards away, but I, I'm almost certain my wife is holding hands uh, with your husband, Jason. So okay, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you see my husband at the park with, with your wife, how long have you been following them? 
I followed my wife this morning because I just was feeling like real weird about, you know, something going on. And I followed her and I'm at the park right now. And, uh, you know, this, I think this is, I think she's with Jason. I think she's okay. with your husband. What type, what type of car you, do you see Jason in? A Lexus. What color is it? Um, white. Okay, that's him. So he's supposed to have went to work today. And this Sunday, and they had some overtime that he's supposed to be doing at work today. And he's at a <laughs> park with your wife. Are yeah, you close yeah, to them? So you, so I'm not close to him. I'm, uh, you know, I tried to stay back. Oh, wait, 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 hold up. She just kissed him. She just kissed who? She just, my wife just kissed your husband. What'd you say your your wife your wife's name is again? My wife's name is Veronica. Veronica. Okay, uh, what park they at? Uh, they at Langley Park. I'm Langley at Langley Park. Park right now. I'm under, I'm about 200 yards away from them, and I'm looking at. She just kissed him again. I cannot believe this, man. I know well. You're not telling me that your your wife is kissing my husband. Uh, what, well, how did you get my number? Let's hold up. Back this up. How did you get my number? And who are you? Like I say, my name is Mark. Uh, a buddy of mine named Fitz, Fitzgerald. Fitz knows, he knows Jason. I don't know and no I, Fitzgerald. I don't want to know how you get my number. Fitz gave me your, Fitz, Fitz told me he knew Jason and some kind of way got me your phone number. I don't even know who he got your number from. All I know is your husband is kissing my wife right now. That's what I know. Okay, you just sitting there watching. Give me the number. We can change this right now. You sitting there watching on some Spectre Gadget. I'm going to bust all this because I don't play that. Because he said he had to work this morning, some little overtime. <laughs> don't have time. Who does that in the park with some body? It's too cold to be in the park anyway. You can't see no ducks. Give me give me the address of this Langley Park. Okay, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. They're getting a blanket out the car. Now, who does that? I know well. He ain't no romantic type of guy. He never take me to no park. But they getting a blanket out the car and going deeper into the park. I cannot believe this. They getting the blanket. Well, what? No, she. I know she. Now nah, I'm looking at. Give me the wine. park address. They got wine and wine glasses. And excuse me, excuse me. Mark, Mark, Mark. Give me the address of the park. You want some white boy stuff? I'm trying to go. I'll bust that up. I don't have time for that calling me. I'll start it and watching your wife. I'm not gonna watch. And I'm gonna hand him his hat. Okay, let's stop this right now. Take your ass over there to the park and give him the phone. I don't have time for this. You sitting up there watching your wife with my. You calling me? What kind of are you? Are you okay? I'm, 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 say what? You supposed to be up there getting on that? Because if I was there, I'd be the slap that. And I've been handing him his cap. Go hand him the phone. Take up there and hand him the phone. What the hell are you look, calling trying, me for? I'm trying to see what else they gonna do. That's what I'm I trying to do. Thing. You done seen enough. All that point that be over there doing, putting out a guy. What you want? Wait to see him. Take your ass over to hand him the phone. I know that Jason ain't in no part for no. I'm. Got my ass at home. I am on our third child pregnant with a baby. But I don't give a I'll go up and whoop his while I'm pregnant. I know well Jason ain't in no park or no. Go hand him the phone. You no, I want to see. Let me, let, me, hold on, let me step out the truck. Hold on. They drinking wine right now. I, I don't give a about that. Go hand him the phone. Walk over and hand him the phone. I don't okay, know what okay. you do with yours. I don't play about mine. Oh, man, they just. Mark, Mark, Mark. I don't know who you are, but go hand him the Phone. Go hand him the phone. You sitting up there watching with your weak. Who in the are you anyway? Um, uh, uh, that's my wife. He with. He with my wife. You must be old. Cause if you was one of them big old yoked up black, one of them got on this. Who does that? You sitting up there watching them at the park. I'm telling you now, I'm whooping that when I see her. I'm whooping your wife. Then I'm whooping Jason. And I'm a slap your calling me with this. You sitting up there calling me? Got my. Blood pressure, sky high. While you sitting up there watching my show, with your wife, you supposed to be all on top of that. Okay. Yeah, when I see you got that coming too, but I'm I'm, I'm gonna find this Langley Park right now. I'm gonna get off the phone because I'll be up there. I'm gonna show you how. Okay, okay, hold on, done. hold on, hold on. Somebody want to talk to you? Give him the phone. Hello. Hello, who is this? This Tommy. Tommy who? This nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your husband Jason got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> This is some b you almost made me have my baby up in this house this morning. <laughs> and I got two moments to go. Yo, Jason got me to pray for <laughs> He know better than that shit. I'm whooping anyway when he come home. Oh, oh, 
Oh, he told me, say, look, man, my wife is a no nonsense. She ain't. She don't take no drama. None of that. He told that don't me. That make no sense because I was like, what man sit there and watch their wife at the park? What what man does that? This is crazy. But you tell him, I got him. I got him. Mm-hmm. Hey, I got to ask you this, baby. One more thing. What is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get Jason with this. No, Tommy, I'm going to get you. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm just going to name the baby Tommy. Tell him that for a joke. Tell him you're going to name the baby Tommy? Yeah, tell, tell, tell Jason that I'm going to name the baby Tommy. <laughs> there you go, Carl. <laughs> Thank you, Junior. <laughs> you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, the American Black Film Festival honors... Um, living legend Garrett Morris, all right, R- yeah. from uh, The Martin Show. Jamie Foxx yeah. returns for season seven of his game show, Beat Shazam, and he couldn't be happier, and neither could we. And uh, we have two very serious warnings that might affect your spring break plans. Uh, that's all coming up at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO, our chief love officer, Steve Harvey. All right, so this one's from Dancy in Lafayette. Dancy says, uh, in December, my husband told me he wants a divorce. He also said that one of us needs to move out. He still loves, he still lives here, so maybe it's time for me to go. And I don't want to live with him if he doesn't love me. But shouldn't he be the one that moves out? Well, how you letting him make all the terms right. of the divorce? You don't have no say-so? Ain't that your house, too? If y'all been married, that's your house, too. If he want a divorce, move. Yeah. He came in there in December and said he want a divorce. Okay, make your move. Go get some paperwork and get yourself somewhere to stay. I'm right here. That's right. He, one of us have to move. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> dog, if this is your idea, <laughs> you, you, you didn't plan the divorce. Yeah, dog, if you plan the divorce mm-hmm. and, and you ready, get some paperwork and get yourself somewhere to live. I didn't ask you for the divorce, so I'm not moving out of my house. I'm, Bye. I love it. And all, all right. a woman got to do is make it stank in there. Lord have mercy, because when a woman <laughs> make her house funky, oh, it's hard God. to go up in there, boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't mean uh, malodorous. I'm talking no. about making yeah. a funky yeah. situation. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah. Slam doors. We got you. Yeah. Yeah. We know. <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> Been there. All right. Uh, moving on to Raven and Woodbridge. Raven writes, I still have my first car that I got in college, and it's in great shape. It's sentimental to me, and I don't even let my husband drive it. So I was shocked when he told his brother he could borrow my car. Can I go against my husband and say no? Yeah, you can. I mean, if you won't let your husband drive right. your car, how your husband letting his brother drive your car? <laughs> but sister, let's hold on for a second. That car is sentimental to you. Really? Mm-hmm. Come on now. That's what she said. It's a car. It's a car. It's depreciating in value. <laughs> it's it's the blue book on it is getting less and less. <laughs> I mean, really, come on now. Come on. It's a car. Right? Maybe somebody, uh-huh. dad gave it to her mom. Or, you know. And Ain't no problem. Sentimental in a different nice way. Sleep. You know. That's good. Mm-hmm. But can't it's nobody drive it, though. <laughs> can't uh-huh. nobody uh-huh. drive it with you. Your husband you can't it. drive your red ass car. Right. She said it's in great shape. It's not right. Yeah, but, you she know, but it. whatever, though. But your husband <laughs> can't drive your car. Yeah, you know, look, come on now. Come <laughs> he on. said, I'll get yeah. you. No, I'll, I'll give people. it to my brother. Junior, what are you talking about? I'm just saying, these are people, uh, they, they they don't have your cars. This is just another car, uh, just a car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's looking. Are you blinking, Steve? You don't what your ass what? talking about? You you answering the question I said. It's a no. car. It's, it's a, a car, car. Uh. It's not a Rolls Royce, what I'm saying. Uh, you have Rolls Royce. It's just, it's just his car. Uh, you just, it's his car. Okay, so it's you answer Rolls the question. <laughs> but what the hell is you talking about? No, you answer as a rich person. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Don't answer as a rich person. Shirley, what, what, what is your oh, next question? You, ma- you mad at me. Uh, what, what? Explain what it to him, Junior. <laughs> he keeps talking to people like he, he rich. This is just a car, Unc. It's just a car. It's her brother's car. She, it, it, it's just a car. 
Just can you answer as a regular person? If it's just a car, then let your husband drive it. If it was a Rolls Royce, we'd have a whole nother conversation about him letting her brother drive the Rolls Royce. Because the brother can't replace the damn Rolls Royce. Right. How I answer the question as a rich person? I answer the question, it's a car between the married people. It's an old ass car that she had in college. I don't give a damn how good a shape it's in. It's the depreciating <laughs> item. The blue book is getting less and less. In a minute, that's going to be an $800 car. Okay. She, if she don't want nobody to drive it, what she ought to do is put her car in storage and and save it. But she wants that's to That's what drive she wants. All right, we're moving on. We're just, just moving on. From now, on, let's don't ask that by cars. <laughs> Why don't we just right. call this segment just Ask Junior? <laughs> no, it's not my, me, Hunk. It's you. Ask Junior. Me. We can have you if y'all want a regular ass answer. <laughs> Ash Junior. We're moving on to Alma and uh, it's a, it's a it's a <laughs> Alma and Danbury. Alma and Danbury said, <laughs> "Would you listen? I am almost sixty, and I met a man online, and he's always asking me for a picture of my breasts." and other things. I don't feel comfortable with my aging body, so do I come right out and tell him that? If I don't send him pictures, will he lose interest? Yes, he's going to lose interest because all he wants is your body. He wants pictures of your breasts and other parts. You online. You 60. Get offline. Mm -hmm. you going to mess around and have your picture all over the church. Don't. What is you sending body part pictures out? You 60. Don't do it. Yeah, she's you don't know how this gonna go. You know you old. You don't even know how this works. Like he just gonna keep it to himself. Pose he show one of his partners, and his partners go, "Damn man, I know her. That's my mama's girlfriend yeah, up there at her. Ebenezer Baptist. What, <laughs> lady? Don't get offline. You too old. Get yeah. offline. Do not send no body pictures of yourself out nowhere." <laughs> <laughs> but it oh, makes you think, oh. since she says she's not comfortable with her aging body, that if she had, if she had a banging body, she would do it. Is that what she's saying? <laughs> she she needs to stop this only. <laughs> Sure, I don't care how aging your body is. I know some bad, bad 60-year-old women. But uh, you go ahead on. I'm trying to tell yeah. you. There's some fine chicks out here. Yeah. But you know your body aging and you ain't comfortable with it. Now, if you was comfortable with it, the picture would be gone by now. <laughs> It'd already be Obviously, out. <laughs> as soon as I... <laughs> see, see, well, what you ought to do is catfish him. Send somebody else's breast in other oh. body parts. Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right, last one, Steve. All right, watch All right. this. Go ahead. <laughs> Percy. Wait, watch this. Do it regular, Steve. Percy okay, and Meridian. This. Percy writes, I was messing with the lady at church, and her husband and the pastor cornered me after church and asked me to stop messing with her. I gave them both my word, and I left that man's wife alone. How can her husband be so understanding. Well, that show sure is good then. Good thing <laughs> you regular. gave him your word. Because <laughs> we ain't supposed to be talking to nobody, wife, but the church or down at the job. <laughs> I'm that? sorry. I went up to him and I said, I sorry. I had my head in my hand ringing it out. And I was just apologizing to him and the parents. And they told me to leave him. And I said I would. And I sure am glad I did. Because Lord, no, man. I All don't right. want no trouble up at that church. Thank you, CLO. I, I that guess was I was really, supposed um, to say she ain't married no more. How, uh, that good-ass regular answer for you? That was the, the rich and regular answer uh, <laughs> edition. All right. Uh, thank you. Coming up next, entertainment news right after this. <laughs> Show <Sure> is. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> All right, Steve, today is a big day. This is exciting, huh? This is the big day that Fireside launches. So tell us more about Fireside. What is it? Uh, it's an it's a, uh, exciting new platform. I partnered with my buddy uh, Mark Cuban. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it's an interactive streaming platform called Fireside. And it is not an AI or none of them deep fakes or nothing like that. These are real people. And my platform launches today, uh, the Steve Harvey Network dot com. Everybody. So if you're at work today, you're on your lunch break at 1230 Eastern today. I launch my very first fireside chat on uh, on off uh, uh, with the platform fireside. All you got to do is go to Steve Harvey Network. 
Just go to steveharveynetwork.com and you could become a member. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do in-depth principles. I'm going to really, really share the things that I've really, really learned. And it'll be a Q&A process. People can ask questions. But I'm going to really share the truth about success and the things I've learned. And what makes my fireside chat so uh, uh, useful is that you're talking to a person who doesn't have a formal education. If you have one, then you have a bit more of a jump than I did. But I can talk to the person who's trying to make it, who doesn't have an education. I can also add the principles to people who do have education. Because as educated as you may be, once you get that degree, it's just a piece of paper on your wall. Until you activate the principles of success, that's when success comes to you. There are a lot of people with degrees still struggling with what do I do? What's my purpose in life? What's my mission? Well, I've discovered the ways to accomplish that. And you can come from nowhere and get to somewhere. And you can start with nothing and wind up with everything. You can start in the middle. You can start at the back and get to the front. I understand the process. So today at 1230, go to steveharveynetwork.com for my very first fireside chat. I'll be doing these on a monthly basis. If you join in, I will share with you everything. You'll also be able to find on fireside uh, other speakers, too, that you might be interested in. But ain't nobody as compelling as me. <laughs> I'm wow. just going to be real with you here. Wow, Steve Harvey Network. <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling you right here. I just have a unique way of doing it. So today at 1230, Steve Harvey Nation, if you will, join me at the steveharveynetwork.com. Thank you. All right. Steve Harvey and that, Mark that's, Cuban. That's, that's okay. him. That's, that's him, though. Right there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Congratulations <laughs> on your new fireside oh, launch. Oh, and one other thing. When you go on there, if you put this promo code in, the promo code is S. H N Steve Harvey Network, just the initials S H N ten. Put that promo code in. Get you something special. All right. Thank you, Steve. Congratulations again. And other entertainment news: the sixth annual American Black Film Festival honors were held Sunday in Hollywood. Annually, the ABFF honors trailblazing blacks in the movie industry. And this year, Taraji P. Henson and Jeffrey Wright received the Excellence in the Arts Awards. Uh, living legend Garrett Morris was awarded with the Hollywood Legacy Award, um, which is presented to an artist that has worked in the industry for four or more decades and made an enduring contribution to film and television. So we have to say congratulations to Garrett Morris or Stan from Martin and remember he used to be on Saturday Night Live as well yes. uh, which is what he's of course Stan is what he's most known for the ABFF honors were hosted by Tommy Davidson nice yeah and, and moving on to some really good news uh, Jamie Foxx is set to return as host of his magical uh, musical game show it's called Beat Shazam after recovering from a lengthy illness last year um, and we're so happy that Jamie is back. His daughter, Corinne, will return as the DJ and co-host of the show. Season 7 of Beat Shazam premieres in May. It will be great to see Jamie return to work after his medical scare last year. All right. That's good news. Look forward Yay, for that. Jamie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, Nick Cannon Jamie. held it down while he was gone, so Jamie's mm -hmm. back. We'll be watching Jamie. All right, I like that so, show. I want to be uh, on that it's show. Really fun. I think I it's, can do it. I think I can yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a fun show, too. It's fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on now to March and April. Well, they're big months for spring breakers, right? Mm -hmm. We want to keep you informed on what to expect if you travel to Miami or popular touristy spots in Mexico. First off, Miami Beach is basically off limits to spring breakers, especially the rowdy spring breakers this year. Uh, Miami PD has initiated a mandatory curfew bag checks, restricted beach access, and DUI checkpoints. In addition to that, parking garages along South Beach will be closed between March 7th through the 10th and March 14th through 17th. In other words, you got to find somewhere else to go besides Miami, okay? Are we clear? Are we oh, clear that they don't no. want you? <laughs> I saw the commercial where they yeah. said it's, it's, not, uh -huh. it's not you, it's us, we're breaking up. <laughs> Miami is breaking up with the spring breakers. <laughs> yes. It's over. Do not come down here. We are closed right. for business. I That's right. It. And if you have plans to <laughs> yes. go to um, 
to to Mexico, any of those touristy spots uh, for spring break. The U.S. Embassy has issued a warning to travelers to be extra cautious when traveling to Cancun, Playa del Carmen, and Tulum. Uh, these areas have seen an increase in unsolved shootings and drownings, uh, ranging See, right from illegal... There. Right there, huh? right there. What? Yeah. Cancun, where? Mm-hmm. Playa del Carmen and Tulum. Don't go down there. Yeah. Take your ass down to Miami. They told you not to come down there. At least you'll be in the States. <laughs> you in Florida. Right? Man, go to Pensacola. Do something, Orlando. man. But listen to me, man. Go take your ass to Disneyland. <laughs> Do not go down to Mexico. Drownings and shooting. You know your ass can't swim no damn way. Spring break. We'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Super Tuesday primary results. President Biden won all Democratic races in the 15th state yesterday. Former President Trump dominated on the Republican side. One thing the Biden campaign is working toward, the gettable Nikki Haley voters. Uh, according to CNN, Biden campaign is very interested in data points coming in from various states that show significant portions of Republican candidate Nikki Haley supporters who say they would not vote for Trump in November. More election news. The Supreme Court ruled Monday that Colorado can't use an anti-insurrectionist provision of a constitution to kick Donald Trump off the ballot leaving it up to voters to decide whether the former president should be returned to the White House after trying to overturn the results of the 2020 election. What? Why can't they use this? <laughs> it's valid. It's in the Constitution. But what's right. crazy the- is is that this is even an this is even a conversation. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. He tried to overthrow the government. But and so he can run the government. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He can run the country. Yeah. But he tried to overthrow and take <laughs> make our it democracy. Make sense. Yes. But he make can be the leader. I yeah. <laughs> it's a really sad. It's, yeah. it's such a sad plight, though, because the number of people who vote for Donald Trump, it just shows us that that's those people live amongst us every day. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, man, to sit here and think that this is a really a viable candidate, that this is the type of human being that you want to represent your nation. I, that's why I know America crazy. I know it's crazy. <laughs> right. And we I get that we get that none of these candidates are perfect, not the Democrats, the Republicans. We get all of that. But come on, he's wait. We talk about you guys going over the edge, Steve. <laughs> this man is so far over the edge <laughs> and he's still <laughs> making well, a run for the White House. <laughs> It's insane. ridiculous. It's I'm insanity. Really, I was I was reading an article. Mm-hmm. Well, not a, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wasn't an article. I was on mm-hmm. internet. The number of rappers that are voting and siding with Trump. It's a- and you know, I was just looking at this ignorant list of people, mm-hmm. and I was going like, "Wow." I mean, th- th- y'all, come on, man. Come on. Get a brain in your head. You don't care for Joe Biden, okay? But you gonna vote for a man who clearly insults you, has very bigoted thoughts about you, ain't got no problem saying it to you in your face, and this is what he says in your face. He done filter this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what he's saying down at Mar-a-Lago and on them golf courses, you wouldn't even believe this, man. Yeah. This Unbelievable. Dude. All right. Um, please get out and vote. Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, Steve will have some suggestions for spring break travel because Miami said <laughs> we're closed. We'll talk about it right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, Steve, so earlier, Shirley did a story about how Miami is warning people we're closed, spring break, don't come down here with all that foolishness. You know, last year was a lot with violence and kids just acting unruly. Mexico, Cancun, Tulum, they've all issued warnings, the State Department, all that kind of stuff about traveling. So my question to you is because I was thinking about maybe going to Cancun for spring break. What, how can you do spring break? Give us some suggestions on doing spring break on a budget. Okay, first of all, listen to this. Okay. The reason that the State Department has issued against uh, Cancun, what else? Uh-huh. Uh, Tulum, and uh, is it Playa del Carmen? 
Yeah. On it's because travel. they are saying there's a, so many unsolved it, shootings and, and drownings. drownings. Uh huh. Take your black ass down there <laughs> and get shot or drown. What oh, is wrong? We don't, oh. we ain't, you ain't got to tell me twice. Mm-hmm. Show your ass going. Pay attention to your kids. Grab your kids, your grandkids, and say, hey, look, man, they done issued a warning about down there in Mexico. Don't even go to Mexico. Yeah. So what we you go? really can't go to Mexico City. That's that that's that alarm is out twenty four seven. They they just they mentioned in these new places. Do not go to Mexico. Well, Don't Cancun, go to Tijuana. What well, Cancun that. is a big spring break place. So I think that's yeah. up there with Miami. So with the Yeah, tradition. because they have all those all inclusive uh mm-hmm. destinations mm-hmm. down okay. there. You no ain't got hey man, y'all need to go over to the DR. Have your nice time in the DR. They got a lot of all-inclusive places over there. Budget. Yes. Budget. 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 Okay. Try DR. to answer this not as a rich person. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Junior okay. told you that earlier. I yes. said, don't do Go that. down to your people's house. <laughs> and, and show, listen to me. Hear what y'all do. Okay. Get you a, a select group of friends that y'all all drank together and know how each other party. Rent you a cabin. Go up in the mountains. Rent you a little cabin somewhere. You uh-huh. know, y'all can make campfires and all this here. All this dancing and clubbing. I don't even know why y'all go to clubs no more. Y'all don't dance. <laughs> These clubs now, nah, man, they don't even dance with each other, man. So yeah, what are you crazy. going to the club for? A VIP section, 1500 Stop all that. Uh-huh. Go get you a cabin somewhere. Y'all go glamping. You all can go... Uh, and uh, get y'all some hotel rooms together somewhere at a, at a, at, a, at a hotel, a resort somewhere. Where? And just Give y'all... me a city. Give me a destination. Atlanta. <laughs> That's one place. <laughs> Have a very very small freak Nick. <laughs> Spring break. Just Bring call it, it Nick. <laughs> don't even don't even put no freaks in it. Just call it Nick. Go down to Atlanta. Have yourself a Nick. Nick. You can go that. You can go to. Just look, Where? man. You can relax. Go to Charlotte. Charlotte, nice, man. It, it's Go Queen up to City. D.C. and enjoy yourself. Yeah. Washington, D.C. is nice. Go up to New York. You can go on up there and get stabbed if you want to. You can go on up to New York. <laughs> they got nice places in New York. Get you a hotel. Go down to Times Square. That's how y'all do spring break. Now, it ain't going to be warm. Ain't no bikinis and all this here. Right. So I strongly suggest going down south. <laughs> Me, personally, I was more of a West Palm Beach type guy. Floyd. High as hell. But going down there, you know, you stay out of trouble. Go to Pensacola. They got okay. some beautiful beaches down there. You can enjoy yourself. Hold on. Hilton Head or somewhere like that. Yeah, you can go to Hilton Head, Myrtle Beach. Yeah. You can go to Daytona Beach. What you mm-hmm. want, Junior? <laughs> what, what can we do in Birmingham, huh? Go to Birmingham. About damn near little or nothing. You know. <laughs> Going down there, they got this. They got a Holiday Inn downtown. They ain't got no room service. They bring you food in the, in the rain, and your bag be wet. With. We did stay there, didn't we? See, I stayed there. I seen that right there. That's how you know me. But I would stay Shout like out to if the I was in Birmingham. I'd go out there to Homewood. I'd get a, yes. a room at the Galleria. Walk yes. in the mall, enjoy yourself. Okay. You know, go play golf. But yeah. y'all gotta y'all stop all this excessive partying and getting high. Go to New Orleans. Go down yes. to New Orleans. Okay. Nice. You talk about a chance of getting robbed. Can you ask <laughs> that in New Orleans? Well, you all need to go to Atlanta. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you, ain't nowhere safe in America. It's all crazy up in here. Ain't no gun laws nowhere. <laughs> it's crazy. Be safe out there. Happy spring break. All right, coming up next. Junior Stay your is- ass at home. <laughs> Junior's ah. next with the prank phone call for the nephew. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at four minutes after the hour, it's today's Strawberry Letter. Shirley has it. The subject is, he's feeling himself, but I'm not feeling him. Okay. But right now, it's time for the prank call. Junior's in for the nephew. What you got, Junior? An invitation to the party. That's what I have. I don't know what this is going to be. What is his nephew? It's going to be crazy. Whatever it is. An invitation to the party. Come on, cat. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to reach Danny. Yeah, what's up? This Danny. Hey, Danny, how you doing? My name is Paul, man. How you doing today, bro? I'm good, man. I'm good. What's up? Hey, man, I wanted to reach out to you, man, um, about your wife. You, you you married to Nicole, right? I want to make sure I got the right person. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh-huh. Now, who, who is this again? My name is Paul, man. I, I know Nicole. Nicole knows my wife. My wife is Regina. And, uh, you know, we know we know Nicole real well, man. We was trying to uh, – we was trying to actually see about getting getting you guys to uh, come out and uh, maybe, maybe go out uh, uh, on a double date, man. We all go out and hit the town. So you know my wife, Nicole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she, she, um, uh, I got your number out of Nicole's phone. And um, okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. What you mean you got my number out of Nicole's phone? You, you got, you, 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 you. I'm not understanding what's going on, though. Okay, right, let me, let me, let me try to break this down to you, man. Uh, myself, my wife Virginia, and Nicole. Uh, we we've all actually been hanging out lately, you know, within the last last six weeks to two months. You know, nah, we've been hanging nah, out. You, you, now nah, you ain't hanging out with my wife. Okay, my I, my wife with me all the time, bro. So I, uh, you know, you might want to, you might have the wrong number. No, nah, no, nah, you 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 Danny, right? I'm Danny. Okay, and Nicole is is your wife. Nicole is like about five foot four, five foot five, light That's light my skin. Wife. Yeah, that's my yeah, wife. Yeah. That's my uh, wife. But uh, you ain't oh. you ain't hanging out with her. Okay, man. I'm trying to explain to you what's going on. And if you want to listen to me, cool. I'm just trying. Okay, here, here's what's up. Get to your point, man. Me, Nicole, and my wife have been swinging. That's some bull. That's some bull. Okay. And, this, and you know what? You walking up the wrong tree, dog. You this some bull. You 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 know this this some bull. Hey, man. This some bull. I wanted to, I wanted to call you and and tell you what was going on and see if you wanted to you know my ass, call my ass. got the wrong number for sure. Trust me, you okay, got man. the wrong well, let's, 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 let's just break this down. Man. How many Danny is it, dog? It ain't that many. So I mean, dude, I mean, you gonna be in denial or you gonna go and accept what I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying deny to deny my ass. Come, deny my I'm ass. trying you to invite you to what? I'm trying to invite you to come hang out with me and the girls. You know, do you want to, do you want to, I mean, this might be something you might like if you try it, man, because, I mean, we didn't have a lot of fun with Nicole. Like what? What the hell you mean you had fun with Nicole? You ain't no god fun with Nicole. So what you trying I'm to tell me? You trying to tell I'm me y'all? We had fun with Nicole. I'm, I'm trying to explain to you. We, we've we done some. Explain we, my hell. No, that. Explain man. This some bullshit. Okay. I, well, number one, I know my wife, and I know she ain't no bullshit like that. Okay. And I ain't never heard no I ain't never heard of you and your own wife, and we've been together for years. So there's some bullshit. Okay, well, I, well, here's, 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 something, here's something you need to understand, man. You know your no, wife. I, I don't need to understand nothing. You need to understand yeah, that this is bullshit. Your wife, but I know her too. I know her. God, I, I know. Man, I know Nicole now. I and you Nicole what? Is, I, 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 you know what? Let, where you at? I'm I'm rolling through the city right now. I got some work I got to do, but I'm just trying to yeah, see. Yeah, I, I need to put my eyes on you. I need to put my eyes on you, man. Okay, hey man, do you want to come do what we be doing? Or not? So you trying to tell me that my wife done been with another woman? Yes, man, it's beautiful, dog. You gotta see it, man. You, man, dog. I'm just trying to keep it real with you, dog. I was just trying to holler at you, man. Let you know what was going on. See, I'm thinking you might want to be a, you know, uh, you know, try it yourself. You know, that's all I'm thinking, man. I ain't, I ain't trying to start nothing. You know what, mother? I don't know no guy, Paul. I don't know no mother, Gina, and I don't know why the you calling my phone. And I tell you what, when my wife get home, I'ma find out about because this some bull, this some bull, man. So okay, no, the problem. Okay, dog, no, calm down though, man. No, calm my, you don't call my mother. Number. How the hell you gonna tell me to calm down? You telling me you fing my wife? What, your, your wife speaking with my another? My wife with another woman? Hey man, Tommy is the one that told us that Nicole was down. She, he the one f- hold, up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Who the f- Tommy? Hey dog, nephew Tommy from the Steve ne- Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> hey, nephew. Hey, Danny. Hey, Danny. This is nephew Tommy, man, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife Nicole got me to prank phone call you, dog. Man, that sh- ain't even funny. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Hey, man, you all right? You all right, man? Man, I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad this was just the, the, the morning 
show, man, and y'all just met me. But, but, but look here, man, somebody going to f*** you up one night. <laughs> Lying. Boy, somebody going to get your <laughs> I hope you got a, a, a for insurance policy. <laughs> Daddy, I got to ask you, man, what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest radio show in the land? <laughs> hey, number one, man. <laughs> the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> there it is. An invitation to the party. That's it. Yep. That's it. Play too much. <laughs> but let me ask you something, Unc. Where is he, Unc? Huh? Where, where is he, Unc? Where is he? Who, Tommy? I mean, yeah. the, man, you know Tommy. Duh, duh, every day. You know, you know, Tommy, man, he can't work. He ain't got no, like, like he can't work a lot. You know. What you mean? He got to take some mean? time off. He ain't, he, ain't, he ain't got no real big back, you know. He got to take some what? time off. Back? A back? A back? Yeah. <laughs> Did you say a back? <laughs> you got to have a big ass back, man, when you got a lot of weight on it. Come on, he, huh? he went out there and got that chateau. He got a TV show. He got a game show. He can't beat me, man. He just cracking. <laughs> okay, so he Cracking like a little Easter egg. Are you he supposed to work when he wants no, to? We can't. Well, he, don't, he don't even tell you he ain't coming. I'm saying. Y'all always know when I, and the only day I miss is when I'm traveling. Yeah. Y'all know okay. when I'm not going to be here. That's they true. know where he at. Right. Right. Like, like today, just where he at. <laughs> yeah. We don't know. Your ass just fell apart. <laughs> I text him, where are you? What are you doing? Yeah, I ain't text him at all because I already know. But, uh, are you upset about it, or you just be cool with it? No, nah, man, you know how many times I've seen this with him? Upset. <laughs> Dog, see, that's why I stay right here, man. When I get some real exciting news, like I yeah. did this month, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't go here and get all excited. And then when I get bad news, when they dogging me and all this here, I don't uh -huh. go down like that. I uh -huh. stay level, man. That way I keep yeah. my same energy, man. man yo, your, network launch, your network launched today. You ain't even... Boy, you shut up. Man, my well, network, whole network. Today at 1230. SteveHarveyNetwork.com. Put in a promo code SHN10. And at 1230, I'm telling you right now, Uncle Steve fitting to put it down on the fireside check with my man Mark Cuban. Oh, he launched this platform. I got involved. Uh -huh. and man, I'm I'm trying to do some things. You know what, man? The thing about me, man, I don't worry about haters. I just keep being greater. And, okay. and and I just keep showing up, man, and doing what God got me doing. And no matter what them haters say, all they can do is watch me because I'm going to work, man. I'm mm -hmm. putting forth an effort. And the effort that I'm putting forth, a great deal of that is to change as many lives as I can, to influence as many people as I can. I do my boys and girls camp every year free. The kids don't have to pay nothing. The mothers don't have to pay nothing. I do a lot of free stuff, man. But I'm dedicated to that because that's the calling God put on my life. He said, you're going to take some of this money I got you making and you're mm -hmm. going to give it away and you're going to give it to the to, to people less fortunate than you. I'm just following the rules, man. And the more you do that, the more you give to the less fortunate, the more God will bless you to have to give. Yes, sir. See, I'm, God's I'm not finna run Harvey. out of blessings. Get I'm not finna run out of blessings. All right, thank you, not Steve me. Jr. Up next, the Strawberry Letter. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. If you need advice on relationships, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com by clicking Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. Yeah, well... This ain't yours, but this is somebody's. Now, look at here. This is just another raggedy moment in another raggedy life, and we're going to try to put it together. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our now world-famous strawberry letter, Shirley Strawberry, and then that damn Steve. Go ahead, Shirley. Yes. What an intro, Steve. Thank you. Uh, no, no subject... thank you. <laughs> He's feeling himself, but I'm not feeling him. Dear Stephen Shirley, my husband and I have been together for 14 years and married for 10. 
After our third child, we gained a little too much weight, so when our toddler started school, we started to work out. My husband has lost a lot more weight than I have, but I am glad that my clothes are fitting again. I have to hear my sweet husband bragging about losing more weight than he imagined he would. I have to smile when he flexes his flabby arm muscle in my face like he's Hulk Hogan. I also have to endure the extra minutes that he's added to our intimacy. You cannot tell my husband that he hasn't gained 10 more inches by losing weight. He he handles it like like the man, and I don't have the heart to tell him that I still don't feel much of anything. Um, I understand. I, I, I honestly didn't marry him for great sex, but he falls short in that area, in that department. I honestly didn't marry him for great sex because he falls short in that department, real short. I fell in love with him and still love him because he is affectionate and attentive. He thinks he's a man in the bedroom because I lead him to believe that. All he needed was a boost of confidence from his weight loss, and now he can barely fit his big head in the doorway. I have to compliment just as much as he compliments me now. He requires affirmations during sex, too. I've run out of lies to tell him, and faking it isn't fun anymore. He is feeling himself, and I'm not feeling him. I'm worried that if I don't feed his ego, another woman will. Will all of this new confidence force him to cheat? <laughs> what? Okay, you're just hating on your husband because he's lost more weight than you? <laughs> what? I mean, I, I do get it, though, because this does make most women mad. You're working hard down at the gym, eating right, all of that. You get on the scales, you've lost about 1.2 pounds, and he's lost about 10. That's usually how it goes. Men lose weight faster than women. I mean, they have more muscle. But I don't really think this is about the weight as much as I think this is about you just don't like your husband right now. I mean, you know, you didn't say he cheated on you during the 14 years you've been together. So, no, losing weight shouldn't make him cheat now. Uh, cheating strictly depends on what kind of person he is, his character and all of that. Um, all I can see in this letter is him embracing himself and getting into the fact that, you know, he's looking good. His confidence is up now. I'm worried about you cheating because <laughs> you... <laughs> Didn't say you didn't marry him for his love making, but you are getting tired and bored of what's going on in the bedroom right now. You say you still don't feel much of anything. You talked about how short he was physically and all that. You say you're faking it. That's not fun anymore. You run out of lies to tell him because he requires affirmations during sex. I, I you don't want to feed his ego. I just think he's on your nerves. And like I said, you don't like him. I just say stop resenting and hating on your husband because he's lost a few more pounds than you. Just make sure you don't cheat on him. Steve? This letter, listen to me, y'all. Listen to me. It's Steve's turn. I don't think this letter is about hate and resentment. I don't, me personally. Surely you have the right to feel that way and I understand where you're coming from with that. I can see where you would say that. But this letter right here is clearly of a woman that's just exhausted from feeding the ego, lying, <laughs> pretending, trying to act like, and she ain't hating on her husband. She actually loved the dude. He's a great father. He's very tender and kind and all this here. But let's just start with the letter from the top. First of all, they, they had these three babies and they gained a little too much weight so when our toddler started school, we started to work out. Okay, that's good. Both of y'all got in there and worked out. You had three babies. You're going to pick up some weight. That's understandable. Why his ass got fat, I don't know. <laughs> what, he didn't have no damn baby. <laughs> he ain't got no baby weight. So what his big ass doing over there getting chunky, I don't know. So y'all go to the gym. Shirley said this exactly right. Men lose weight faster simply because we have a bit more muscle and it's just easier for a man to lose weight because there's a difference in our hormone balance. And then once you have a baby, there's a hormone adjustment. I'm assuming that you have to make. This is what I've heard. Never had a baby. How I know, but I know it's harder. <laughs> so now you are struggling, but congratulations, you've lost weight. The problem is his weight loss. He want to throw it in your face like it done turned him into something else. And now it has given him more prowess in the bedroom, which he didn't have none to begin with. 
Lord have mercy. <laughs> now he flexing his little flabby arm muscles in your face like he Hulk Hogan. And you got to endure the extra minutes that he done added to our intimacy. And then you cannot tell your husband that he hasn't gained 10 more inches by losing weight. Uh-oh. <laughs> now, I I probably shouldn't harp on this section of the letter that you said. But he acting like he's gained 10 more inches. Uh-oh. How Careful. short was he? Careful. If you... If you done picked up 10 and you still ain't doing nothing, damn. Hang on. Damn. Hang bro. on, Steve. We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 <laughs> minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, he's feeling himself, but I'm not feeling him. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject is, he's feeling himself, but I'm not feeling him. Well... He's feeling himself, but I ain't feeling him. So this is a letter, really, y'all, about a man who done lost more weight than his wife. They both had they had three children, and, of course, she picked up baby weight, and so she's uh, having to deal with uh, some things. Um, he, um, now, because of this weight loss, he think he hug hugging. Now, he already intimately, that's not why she married the man. She didn't marry him for his intimate prowess because she treats him well. He's very kind. He's tender, affectionate, and he's, 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 very, he's just there in all the right departments. So she didn't marry him for sex. But now he done lost his weight. He done added way more minutes to what was already sorry. <laughs> you already doing a damn thing. Now you're going <laughs> to add some more time to this. <sighs> she just laying in the bed with her arms folded, looking mad. at her watch. Mad. Looking over at the clock. How much longer? Looking all off. He just sweating. She ain't had the hard to tell him, this is what she said, I don't have the heart to tell him that I still don't feel much of anything. God. <sighs> Let me harp on this line for just a second. <laughs> I don't have the heart to tell him that I still don't feel much of anything. Lord have mercy. Nothing worse than you up in there working. You got your helmet on. A helmet? You got your work vest on. You done packed a lunch by the bed, and you ain't doing no damn damage. You just up in here. You're just up in here just aggravating her. Boy, stop. Now, you didn't marry him for great sex because he falls short in that department. Real short is what she said. So now he done lost his weight. Now he up in here. Shorty Long think he doing something now. <laughs> now, Shorty Long, didn't, he think he didn't, as you say in her letter, she says, he hasn't gained 10 more inches by losing weight. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> so let's move on, y'all. I think we know what the real problem is here. She's not, hey, she don't dislike her husband or nothing. She's just disappointed in the sexual Oh. Uh, area and he ain't he ain't add nothing to it you know to change that you know anyway all and then she has to lead him to believe that he's all that and all he needed was to boost the confidence from his weight loss and now he can barely fit his big head in the doorway I have to compliment him as much as he compliments me now he requires affirmations during sex whose is it is it mine what I'm doing now Feel that? How about now? Woo! I bet woo! Breaking it, breaking it. Here I come, Big Daddy on the move. Yeah, Big Daddy, yes, yeah, Big Daddy. When you really won't go say, little fella, stop. Yeah, she's sick of it. I have I have run out of lies to tell him, and faking it isn't fun anymore. He's feeling himself and I'm not feeling him. I'm worried that if I don't feed his ego, another woman will. Will all this new confidence force him to cheat? Lady, ain't no other woman gonna tell this lie. I'm telling you right now. 
<laughs> See, when you go outside your marriage, you got to go outside your marriage with some activity. Ain't no other woman fitting to tell this lie. For what? First of all, they not married. She ain't going to think there's no future in it. And once she get it and find out what you done found out, it ain't gonna be. she ain't going to have to tell no more lies. Lose my number. Quit calling me. So please, lady, pick your ego up off the floor and don't lose your self-esteem to this dude who has gained so much. You don't have to worry about him cheating because he ain't, he ain't going to go nowhere. Listen to me. He ain't nowhere. He ain't nowhere doing nothing. He ain't all that. Me is cheating on her. You know, ain't like he and that, you know, like he did. Ooh, girl, I'm so afraid another woman going to get her hands on this here. <laughs> and don't nobody want that. <laughs> but Steve, one question. Ain't nobody finna sit up here and talk about, ooh, I can't wait for him to call me and give me a little of nothing. Shorty Long, where you at? One question, Shorty Steve. Long, where you? Go ahead, sure. The affirmations during sex that she has to give him. Come on. Every day Woo! and every day. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> Lord, Lord, look at you. <laughs> oh, you bringing it. <laughs> I can't take no more. <laughs> stop. Please stop. I can't breathe. Steve. Boy. Woo. Steve, the Oscar goes to no. best lead. Ladies and gentlemen, the Oscar goes to <laughs> Sheila Perkins. <laughs> Sheila, the actor. I want to thank everybody at the Academy. <laughs> you know, I gave it my all. He was, yeah. you know, the fact that I stayed in here for We've been married 14, been together 14 years, been married 10. I've hung it. I've had three kids with him. I don't even know how we had these kids. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, your comments. oh, Lord. <laughs> on today's Strawberry Letter, on, on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM, and check Who's out the Strawberry Letter. I don't know. Podcast. <laughs> Where Not is I it? I don't know. <laughs> on the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app. Are we there yet? Sound- nope. Sounded so good. Coming up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Junior, it's time. Sports Talk. Now, what's going on? Russell Wilson, he got released yesterday. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh, Broncos let him go. Swing and a miss. That's it. <laughs> we done. That's it. 85 million. Broncos take it. I, I wasn't ready. I don't know. So wait, Damn. wait. Let me ask you this. So what does that mean, Steve? He gets eighty five million dollars? No, 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 he don't no, get no, no, eighty five. No. See, football is different from basketball. Okay. Very few. They don't. Not a lot of people get guaranteed money. Now Russell got a nice signing bonus when he signed, and he mm-hmm. made money. But this year he was supposed to get like um, a huge amount of money for the last two years. But they just released him. Yeah. Okay. See, they didn't trade him. If they had traded him and the uh-huh. team picked up the trade, they uh-huh. pick up the contract too. Oh, they sure would. And they couldn't get nobody to bite on that much money for Russell because he's 35. But Russell's still a great ball player. He was just in the wrong system with Peyton. Uh, Sean, Sean Payton. Payton. Sean Payton, yeah. Yeah, he had the wrong system, and he wasn't happy with Russell. Russell Wilson can steal ball. Wrong system. Now what's going to happen is Russell going to get picked up, but he ain't going to oh. make nowhere near that money. But Russell Wilson is smart with his money. Would he, would he, so he going to be good. Could he come okay. to, the, to the Falcons? Huh? You think he'd go to the Falcons? I, I want him to come to Cleveland. What? You what? got Cleveland? You got Deshaun Watson? Yeah, I got Deshaun Watson. You can't. When the last time you seen Deshaun Watson? <laughs> <laughs> I know we got him, but we got him where? Yeah, because we saw Flacco <laughs> took you to the playoffs. Right? Yeah, yeah. And if you think Flacco is the real deal, you got to no. lost your whole. <laughs> you want him to come to Cleveland? That's... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh... Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. that's all you see. I don't give a damn about no other football team. I don't care nobody going to no Falcons. I don't care <laughs> nothing about none of that. Okay, uh, what about this, uh, Justin Fields? Should he come to Cleveland too? Yes. <laughs> we Everybody need to have Justin Deshaun. Fields, Russell Wilson, Deshaun, and Joe Flacco. <laughs> <laughs> need all four of them. But let me say this. I was reading on social media. Russell Wilson's statement, his that he released, he's such a class act. 
He thanked the Denver Broncos, the fans, the city. He's just a good guy, man. Okay, I'm he's just, a grown man. Yes. You're going you're gonna to not only gonna get a hell of a football player, you get a hell of a person in that locker room. Yeah, he's, he's a leader. He's a great teammate. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. you want. Okay, Unc, but if it was you, if 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 they let you go, Unc, is you going to use the same statement or you going to? No, I'm, well, I'm going to be down to please statement. Please with <laughs> my statement. What, what what is that? What? What you Because I, I didn't set the training facility on fire. You don't okay. Fire me. Okay. Stop. Fire me, take my money without costing you. Know, you think you're 85 in dead money. It's going to be 85 oh, million God. in damages. All right. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Junior. At the top of the hour, a woman walked in on two people having sex, but no one believes her story. We'll talk about it. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, Steve, this is from Evelyn in Cleveland. I went oh, to come my on aunt's. Now. Uh-huh. Evelyn. She yep. old. Come on, Evelyn yep. in Cleveland. Probably stay go. up on 137th and Bartlett. Go ahead. All right. Well, Evelyn in Cleveland says, I went to my aunt's house to play cards. After a few strokes. Hell strong- yeah, she old. Don't nobody do that no more. Go ahead. <laughs> People still play cards. Listen. After a few strong drinks, I went to the bathroom. When I opened the door, Miss Mavis was on the bathroom counter, and my aunt's husband was in front of her with his pants down. Yeah. They didn't notice me standing there, and they did not they stop what they were doing. Uh-uh. I, to- I told my husband what I saw, and he said I had way too much to drink. I told my husband what I saw, and he said, you have way too much to drink. Anyway, no one in my family wants to hear my story. So I confided in my coworker. She said it might be something the family does all the time, and they're not telling me. My husband told me that I have an active imagination. Mm -hmm. Why won't he believe me and help figure all this out? No, this is what it is. Let me tell you, your coworker wrong, and and, and, and all you ain't got to figure nothing out. Everybody know Mavis. <laughs> no, nobody believe that Mavis' big ass can get up on that sink. Didn't say all know. that. It just said she was on the counter. And your Uncle Lester, you know good and hell well Uncle Lester, had his pants down where? Well. <laughs> Uncle Lester at the last party, the last car hey. party last week, had just sat up there and peed on himself. Now you trying to tell me that. Him and big ass Mavis is in this bathroom and big Mavis and got up on that sink and we still have a sink. See, that's what that is. It's not nobody wants to believe you because when you said Mavis was up on that sink, when the last time you ever heard a woman named Mavis with the ability to get up on the sink? It ain't gonna happen like that no more. Mavis, Uncle Lester, her name Evelyn, she already old. And at a card party. What they, they don't even do that hardly no more. This old people stuff. Young people don't even play cards no more. So, but anyway, we have to help Evelyn. She has to figure this out. She said nobody believes her. She saw what she saw. Yeah, you saw it, and what you saw was real. <laughs> Man. Let me get back to this. It's going to pop off at the next car party. <laughs> <laughs> Mavis is well, Unc. She well. Yeah. She, Mavis, she, on the, she on the sink. Yeah, nobody's never seen nobody no no nobody named Mavis with the ability to get up on the sink. Think of all the Mavis. She's you flexible. Want. Mavis is flexible. Mavis big ass can't get up on that sink. And we still have a sink. <laughs> they ain't got no double vanity. That's a single sink. Yeah. That's a hood house. Yeah. So what should Evelyn do? Uh, Leave it alone? Don't don't Yeah, try to, Evelyn, why are you don't try to figure it, it out? No, okay. M- Mavis ain't your mama. Yeah, yeah. As long as that ain't your mama in there. Damn, Miss Mavis. <laughs> yeah, come See, on. See, you're going to mess up. The reason they don't want you to say nothing because you're going to mess up that car party. And they, that party's a staple in the hood. You're not finna mess this up talking about Mavis. <laughs> All right, Mavis. Evelyn in Cleveland. You heard your homeboy, Steve. He said, leave it alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay out of that, Evelyn. I know that y'all know all y'all over there on Kinsman with this here. All right, we got one minute left. Let me see. We have time for one more. This is Kay in Louisville. I kept seeing the same small dog in my backyard. He would crawl under my fence and lay out on my patio every afternoon. He came over Friday, and I noticed he was still there at 10 p.m. I had no idea 
where the dog came from and it's getting cold so I set him up a makeshift bed and a cardboard box and he slept in my laundry room all night. I put him out in the front yard in the morning and I saw him crawl back under the fence in the backyard. By Saturday evening I start feeding him. It's been two weeks and no one has come looking for him. Can I assume he's mine now? Yeah, Aww, yeah, yeah. 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 You got a dog. Yeah. And that's nice of you, too. It's cold outside. That yeah. dog coming back up under that fence, too. He ain't going nowhere. Right. Right. Man, I got a bed up in here. She can set some food up. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. Because somebody, ain't, you ain't seen no pictures on telephone posts, nothing, no tree, dog. Looking for the dog. Somebody yeah. let his ass out. <laughs> you now have a dog. Let coming up in 20 minutes there. after the hour, yeah, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Just imagine you're in Target and you look over and Beyonce is pushing her cart next to you. It could happen because she admitted, I saw this online, that she sneaks in Target. In a recent interview, Beyonce said, when I'm not dressed for an appearance or I'm not training or hustling, my go-to outfit is a black hoodie and black sweatpants. On a good day, I could sneak into Target unnoticed. What do y'all think, Beyonce? Y'all could just see her in Target? That's so cool. That is so cool. I love that. She got, yeah. a, she got a mask on and everything. Right. Glasses, hood. I bet you, yeah, you can. I saw that. her in New York at, mm-hmm. um, what is this store? Bergdorf. Uh-huh. One time I was in there. Yeah. She was shoe shopping in Bergdorf. Yeah, she can afford all it. Yes, yes, and you can too. All right, so Steve, have you ever been inside a Target store? That's still called what? Hell yeah, I've been in the Target store. Hell yeah. I bought some Christmas lights back in, ooh, Lord have mercy. I bought them a long time ago. You have to disguise yourself if you're going to go to the store. You have to go to what store, Jim? Target. Yeah. I ain't been in the the Target. I want to go. That's what I just asked you. Oh, you want to go to Target? Well, just put yeah, a disguise on like me. Like me. Yeah, I tell you where I go to. I go to Bass Pro Shops, though, with no disguise. I go. <laughs> That's your store. <laughs> Take all them damn pictures and everything with them country ass people. <laughs> That's what they know everything face. about fishing. All right. Thank you, Steve. Coming up at 33 after the hour, we'll play another round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. It's time now for Would You Rather. Would you rather have tiny teeth or tiny hands like a raccoon? Hey, tiny teeth, huh, Junior? Mm, that's it. Mm, tiny hands? Nah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't have them little chitlets in my mouth. <laughs> you all on TV. Smile now. I look like I'm 12. <laughs> Steve look crazy. <laughs> big ass, these big ass lips, lips you'll never see them. Steve look crazy about the mouth. Dog. dog <laughs> these big ass lips and tiny ass teeth. <laughs> Survey said. <laughs> can't say Man. that. All right, so. I mean, I'm too big to have little ass hands. So you got so to choose. Have, I had I had her hands like Tommy. <laughs> oh. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm gonna take them little ass hands. I can't have them little ass teeth. I can't have. Them. Got it. Yeah. Would you rather nose grows longer with each lie, or you gain two pounds for each lie? <sighs> Junior, you go first. Oh yeah, give me the two pounds. I'm taking two pounds. That's so you are gonna gain some weight? Two pounds yeah, yeah, for every yeah. lie. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm damn near there now. All right, Steve. Yeah, I'm going to take that nose because I'm going to be, be fat as hell by Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm big as a house. Yeah. I'm going to damn near be dead by Christmas. <laughs> you got to tell somebody to lie up. I have a heart failure. Mess around about Christmas. Two pounds. Every lie. Woo. <laughs> God damn. I weigh about 680 by Christmas. <laughs> My six hundred pound life. <laughs> You're not gonna stop lying, big dog. I'm gonna gain fifty today. Okay. So I ain't no way in hell. I'm gonna get that long ass nose. Sit up in here and you know put mistletoe on it and be kissing or something like that. I'm gonna do something, but I can't. Oh. Mm-mm. Hell no, not a two pounds per lie. God damn. You gonna be big. Yeah, right, you gonna be dead. Go. I'm gonna be on my six hundred pound life. I'm gonna be up in there. In that bed, frying chicken on my stomach and stuff. Electric skillet, sheet of plywood on top of me. <laughs> you can't 
can't get out the bed. I, I saw that dude in there. They put a sheet of plywood on his chest, and he had electric skin. He fried his own chicken. I said, God, yeah. God. I saw that. Doug, I saw That's that damn. from me. Oh, it, damn. Right. All right, let's go. Would you rather Keep go bowling on a date with your wife or take her to miniature golf? Oh, and Steve, you oh. play golf. <sighs> Junior, you go first. Bowling. bowling? Yeah, bowling. I love bowling. bowling. Yeah, we go bowling. Yeah, we go bowling. All right, Steve. Miniature yeah, golf? I go play miniature golf. Oh, bowl. Really? Oh, you had a bowling alley in your house before. What are you talking about? Hey, 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 hey. What? <laughs> yeah, golf course in the house, too. So damn what? What? <laughs> All right, that's... You just... Y- y'all little ass come on here today. You just full of little information. <laughs> we got to go. I'm All right. Ass, we'll be back with closing remarks at 49 after the hour. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Tonight, catch an all-new episode of Judge Steve. We will be watching what? at... Yes, sir, your honor. Yes, sir. Judge at, Steve, a new episode tonight. Tonight, honey. Wait a minute. You're Come not on. talking about the guy. Wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. Do you know I even know how Judge Steve came about? No, we don't know. No. NBC decided canceled the Steve Harvey show, which was the number one talk show in his time slot. And they canceled Little Big Shot, which was a hit. The story went out that Steve Harvey's TV career is over. Well, what I happened to learn was when God allows for a door to close, he's giving you the opportunity to walk up the hall because he has another door for you to open. This Mm -hmm. is a true fact without giving you a number. Because I created the Judge Show, and it's my IP, intellectual property, I partnered with ABC. I own the Judge Show 50-50 with ABC. They provide the distribution. I provide the IP and the talent. Mm -hmm. I now, because of the deal I structured with ABC, I now own a show on Primetime Network. Financially, what that did for me was it allowed me to stop doing the talk show, which taped five days a week, 35 weeks a year. I now am done with my judge show in one month. Nice. Working smarter, not harder. I and love it. The financial reward is greater. Yes, sir. Working smarter. You God. can't tell me God won't and, do it for you. And won't he business. do it? Yes, he will. Won't, won't he, he do will? It? Yes. So sir. while they laughing mm. and chuckling, you have no idea how God takes care of me. And this is part Amen. of my closing remarks because Go God ahead. always makes a way for me. It's never over. And to the fat lady saying, and I ain't even introduced her. So I really don't understand. And you know, it's an amazing thing. I try to get people to understand this. Listen to me. Your life is going to be beset with challenges, hardships, trials, tribulations, setbacks. Your life is going to have that. It's called life. It's not called karma, everybody. It's called life. And you got to be careful when people are addressing the things that happened to you, trying to make you think it's payback for something you did. You know, it, everything that happens in your life that's not positive is not payback for something you did. It's just these are the cards of life. If you lose your mother or you lose your father or you lose a sibling, that's not payback. That's grief. Everybody has to experience that. When your child makes a mistake after all your well-meaning and doing as parenting, that's not payback. That's life. Your child has to make the same mistakes the ones are the same ones you made. And some of them are going to be different. Some of them are going to be more impactful. But your children have to learn the lessons of life just like you did. It's not karma. It's called life. Everything that happens to you 
is God allowing things to happen to prepare you for what you are asking for. Little did I know that the reason God was allowing my life to have so many hardships in it is because after he straightened it out for me, I would have a story to tell. Thus today, the fireside chat. Now, why would somebody listen to me if I didn't have the experience to know what I'm talking about? If I had never been down before, how can I tell anybody how to get up? If I had never been under before, how can I tell anybody how to get over? See, you gotta have test in order to have a testimony. Your life is surrounded by test, adversity, situations, as is everybody else's. Now, understand this. If you spew hate, expect hate to come back to you. But because you are being hated on, it's not because you've been hating. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes God is testing you. He's toughening you. See, what God done did with me through the internet, and let me tell you something, God done toughened me. He done, he done gave me a skin that I needed because he knew what was going to happen. The higher I take you, the more they're going to come for you. The, the higher God takes you, the more they're going to come for you. And I've said this a few times on the show, and let me remind all of you this again. I've never had, and you will never have. I ain't ever had a hater that was doing better than me, ever. Have you noticed that all of your haters are not doing as well as you? Have you ever noticed that, y'all? Hate come from the bottom up. Hate don't come from the top down. If you got a supervisor that's hating on you, you know why he hating on you? Because he know you got what it take to take over for him. And he don't want it to happen. Because you better than him. Keep your head up, y'all. Keep your eyes on the prize and keep talking to God because God got a wonderful life for you. And it don't matter what they say. They can't stop nothing God got for you. What God has for you, ain't a man living can stop it. The judge show will be on tonight. The fireside chat will be on today. And when you get through talking about me, God keep lifting me up. I love you. Thank you. Have a great day, y'all. Talk to God. He'd love to hear from you. Peace. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 